All right, so let's get down to some cabling. All right, so again, remember I said before, the better the cabling, the better the, uh, the better the airflow. So we want to slide this 24-pin ATX connection about behind here, and then bring it back over here. Now that we have the 24 pin uh, power supply cable in its spot, we need to put the 8 pin CPU, which is up there, top left hand corner. So let's look for it. This particular power supply has two, two 8 pin CPU connections. It doesn't really matter which one we use. The 8 pin was back here on the top left hand corner. This is the top right hand corner now because we flipped it around. So we we'll want to stick it in here. Now let's turn it back around. It's right here now. So we'll go ahead and connect this guy here. And this guy here. Most 8-pin CPUs like that one or like this one will split in two because some other boards only require a 4-pin and some other boards require an 8-pin CPU just to provide more voltage to the CPU or less voltage. This particular, this particular board because it can take you know from the lowest end Core i3 all the way to the highest end Core i7 or even the Pentiums. Let's go ahead and connect the headers. Headers are what control the power button, the reset button, and the lights on the case. So to hide them, let's go ahead and whoops, thought I had them. Power LED and power LED. On the motherboard itself, it tells you what each what each little uh, connection is. I'll zoom in in one quick second. These guys are typically in the bottom right hand corner of your board, so every bo every board will be different. Power LED, put them on here. On some cases, you'll find that they have for the power LED or three prong. Some of them split them up into two pieces. Power switch goes down here and reset switch goes down here and then to make it look nice just give it a nice little tug nice and tight. So now we we'll want to connect the USB 3 and the HD audio. This USB on this board goes next to the power supply cable Every board is going to have it differently. Right now I'm going to be connecting the HD audio cable. For those of you that want front panel audio, this board has a header. Most boards do. Connect it right there. And you can tuck the cable away so you can't see it. And you got USB 2. A lot of, a lot of devices are supposedly coming USB 3, but we all still have USB 2 devices, so it's important to have it. This case has two USB 2's and two USB 3's at least in the front the back of the board is going to have whatever the back of the board is going to have now we're at the point that we can install the video cards easy way to tell okay so there's going to be one free spot here so the first one is a blank card that's for PCIe 1X slot whatever your board has this particular board the first slot is PCIe by one I don't have any of those devices so, I'll just get rid of two and three, the slot covers. And now, so I skip one, I skip this guy right here, and now I unscrew these two down here. Whoops. 
All right. And these are kind of nice. They have little holes here to let air in or out. This is the other 8-pin CPU we're not going to use, so we'll tuck it away back here and we'll put it away later. And we have these two guys left. This power supply has two 6-pins or one 6-pin and one that you can add two to the 6 to make an 8-pin. These are GTX 660 Ti's, so they don't need a whole lot of power. So I'm going to go ahead and plug these guys in real quick. And not every board can do this. Some might get in the way. But what I like to do is, for better cable management... Okay, so now, for better cable management, what I like to do is, I keep this cable down here and I put the card over it. Not every single board could do it. You might have a really large Northbridge or ICH heat sink down there. Heat sink is great to have. It keeps things cool with some air passing through it. Over it, I mean. Which is what we want. Again, to keep everything cool, we want airflow coming through from the front all the way through the case. So now, and this guy goes plugged in right here. And now, since we have both of them going through there, we just get rid of the excess. For right now, it's just out of sight, out of mind. We will come back to those soon. We will come back to those soon on the back of the board. We're going to have to. That's the only way we're going to be able to close this case up. Now we want to put the additional cable. This is going to be for SATA power. Right now, the best one, because it's out of the way, is going to be the opticals. We bring this guy through here, and we plug that guy in, and we plug that guy in. So now we have both of those plugged in up here, uh, SATA power ports up here, and now we're just hiding the excess on the top. Nobody will know. All right, so now we're going to connect the hard drives. So this is going to be three back here right here these three and the two in the back let's connect the ones we can see first so I'm just going to slip them through down here so now we're going to go ahead and connect the power for these three hard drives down at the bottom These are hidden, so they don't have to be pretty. That's why it's great to have them in the back. And the excess, just slide it under the hard drives. No one will ever know You guys already know how we plugged the hard drives in and how we plug the power supplies in. I'm just going to plug these in. I covered them because I have not registered them yet. So I don't want anyone else to register them for me under their names. Sorry, hopefully you didn't see the back of my head for too long. And here is the second side of hard drives, two Kingstons. All right, so now, so now we got to plug in the SATA ports. 